rates of hunger have been falling in many parts of the world. However, rates of micronutrient deficiencies are conversely on the rise with accompanying manifestations of malnutrition. In particular, deficiencies of iron, vitamin A, iodine, and zinc are associated with poor growth and cognitive development, as well as increased mortality and morbidity in both adults and children. Micronutrient deficiencies are often referred to as hidden hunger, as they can occur within the context of adequate energy intake and can be overlooked using traditional food security measures. Malnutrition is also an intergenerational issue, exacerbated by modern changes in diet. Only going back in time, 50 or 60 years, communities in Kenya had extensively used forests and trees to provide much of their dietary requirements. However, with forests and trees disappearing from landscapes, biodiversity and genetic resources for nutrient-dense foods and agriculture are being lost at an alarming rate. This worldwide trend characterized by low dietary diversity results in vitamin and mineral deficiencies. This can lead to serious and long-lasting consequences for individual well-being and countries' socio-economic development. When I retired, I had a vision of this nutrition food and why our people long back used to stay for a long time. But now uh, the age uh, limit is so low. But then I thought of the kind of food these people used to eat and even the fruits they used to eat. Agroforestry research indicates that there is much that can be salvaged. Fruit trees in the landscape, whether cultivated or wild, whether exotic or indigenous, are still valued and consumed by some members of communities. Particularly, nutrient-rich foods from indigenous trees are eaten by children as snacks when available from forests and remnant trees. We have several of the indigenous fruits. We have a mago, a kwali kwali, a malera, a jolokome. All those are found within this reach. And the children normally eat them. And we have also uh, a me. It is masambarao. Mangos, jackfruits. There's another fruit here called tope tope. We've got konazi, nguguna, chocho, uh, and such like. In our name, we call them Vitoria. They are also indigenous fruits, but I don't know them in English. Does everybody here like wild fruits? Yes. Which one? Milo. What else? But to ensure that these nutrient-rich resources remain available to communities, there is the need to raise awareness of their value, which is currently lacking in many countries across Africa. Because we don't know, that's why we are cutting them, so that we can get a place where we can plant some other things. Yeah, because it is a big tree which takes a lot of space and yet we don't have, we don't see the profit of it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if you continue coming and uh, uh, tell us the importance of that tree, then we can make use of it sometimes. When we are to, to that, we are going to cut them because they are useless to us, yeah. They, they do not value it as much as that because, uh, as I've told you, this thing is being felt some other time because it is consuming space for other, other projects. So it is of no real value. Uh, those uh, few which are remaining are the ones which are sufficing the community. Because it is not planted, <laughs> they find it natural in the forest, so no one cares about it. You can find the bobabs having fallen down, nobody is there to pick them, they're just left there. Keeping trees in landscapes, domesticating and cultivating a diversity of species is important. 
the productivity of especially indigenous trees is often more adapted and resilient to adverse climatic conditions than that of annual crops. Tree fruits also often provide a safety net during periods of crop failure and gaps created in seasonal crop production. Tree fruits are particularly rich sources of vitamins, minerals, proteins, fats and other nutrients. But for many indigenous and wild species, accurate information on their nutritional values is overlooked and severely lacking. Where such information is available for a few species, it remains virtually unknown where it's needed. For example, the iconic baobab tree is abundant in eastern and coastal Kenya. It can have up to five times higher vitamin C values than oranges, including a range of other nutrients, but almost no farmers are aware of this fact. The lack of awareness is not limited to nutrient values, but also to novel product development and the market potential of products, such as those that can be made from baobab and other fruits. These potentials can be local and increasingly international with demand for highly nutritious, organic and novel fruits in European and North American markets. I have a baobab like this. This is the mall first. If you open this, we get that one. And then we cook, we mix color and sugar, we make some bomb bomb. This is all the baobab. In Kenya, the indigenous fruit trees are very much undervalued. In other countries, there are markets uh, developed and products developed for indigenous fruits. In Kenya, it is still in the beginning and we want to promote that as well. One aspect is that the indigenous fruits, they are, they are adapted to the local environment. Even with climate change, which is a big issue nowadays, these indigenous fruits are hard enough to survive and still give good harvest. So we want to promote that with farmers to accept that better and to acknowledge the value of these things and also by integrating that better into markets. So we provide training to farmers to process even wild fruits into a good product which they can sell and of course also use in the families. There are a number of research entry points which the World Agroforestry Centre is exploring on showcasing the role of trees and agroforestry for improving nutrition such as collecting largely absent data on tree and farm diversity and nutrition and consumption patterns for the development of fruit tree portfolios. These portfolios can also provide for year-round availability of fruits to fill seasonal food and nutritional gaps. Where the exotic uh, fruits are ready, we eat them. When they are gone, we've got indigenous fruits. So we have uh, fruits all time round. Yeah. Busha County has good diet because the things that are found in this county are good. If people only make use of them the right way, they will get the right thing. You know, you may walk far place to look for gold, and yet gold is just where you are. Furthermore, a number of ICRAF's decision support tools, such as VECEA, Vegetation Maps of Africa, are used to ensure the portfolios are ecologically suitable for current and future climates. Research has done a lot of work, and we, are, we must appreciate that. But a lot, a lot still remains to be done. Our role is to fill knowledge gaps and also to assess the different approaches we are using for the impact. We have so many indigenous species. Alone in Kenya, we have about 400 species which could be used as wild food. These 400 species, maybe of two of them, we have some nutritional analysis, and all the others are completely unknown. Then secondly, we have to test how we can get the planting material to the farmer best, which system is the most efficient with regard to money, to quality, integration of, of the rural communities, to have sustainability. Then also in our, all our training approaches, we want to know what is the best method of training. Most problematic with regard to um, diets, because these are very cultural things. And here I think science should really help to find best ways. Test different approaches, do impact
impact assessment and then let's go for the best one and refine it further to have it really very suitable and on the point to go to our goal to improve the situation of malnutrition.